Hello students and welcome to Dr. Seuss Reading Day. I'm Kathy and I am uh, retired. I, I worked for Temple College in my last job and one of the things that I've learned in my career is that learning is a lifelong process. So uh, don't think that just because when you graduate from high school or college that you're done. You're not. There's a lot to be learned and one of the best ways to learn is by reading. Sometimes we read for fun, sometimes we read for, uh, to learn new things. So today, I am going to read to you a story called Soccer Sam. Now, soccer is pretty popular in the United States these days, and you can see from this poster back here that soccer has been popular in most parts of the world for a long, long time. But it hasn't always been so popular here in the, in the United States. And this story is a book that was uh, one of my sons, and it was written actually right around the time he was born, and soccer hadn't really taken off then. Now, how many of you play soccer? Raise your hand. How many of you watch soccer? Raise your hand. All right, so soccer is pretty popular in the United States these days, but let's go back in time when it really wasn't, and I'll tell you a story about it. Now, one of my favorite things about my life has been being a soccer mom and going to soccer games and cheering my, my kids on and going to professional soccer games and, and cheering on the teams there. One of my sons was actually a soccer referee, and I'm wearing one of his soccer referee jerseys right now. So he not only played soccer, but he also refereed, and that's a great thing to aspire to as a, for a, a teenage job. So you might think about that as you're thinking about all of this. So I'm going to read you all about Soccer Sam. Soccer Sam is by Jean Marsolo and illustrated by Blanche Sims. So let's begin with Soccer Sam. The plane from Mexico was landing. Sam stood at the airport window and watched he was going to meet his cousin Marco for the very first time. Soon, a boy, Sam's size, came through the door. Sam's mother hugged him. Marco, this is Sam, she said slowly. Sam, this is Marco. Hi, said Sam. Suddenly, he felt shy. Hola, said Marco softly. In the car, Marco was very quiet. So was Sam. We are happy to have you come live with us for a year, said Sam's mother. See, si, said Marco. But he didn't look happy. He just looked out the window. You like sports? asked Sam. Sam loved sports. He was very good at them, too. Marco shrugged. He doesn't speak much English, said Sam's mother. When they got home, she said, take Marco out to play. Sam, introduce him to your friends. What if he doesn't understand what we say? Asked Sam. Speak slowly, said his mother. He'll learn. Sam and Marco went outside. At the end of the street, kids were shooting baskets. Sam's friend Rosie tossed him the ball. Sam aimed and fired. The ball sailed through the rim. This is my cousin Marco, Sam said. He tried to talk slowly, but it was hard. Marco, this is Billy, Chris, Rosie, Tommy, and Freddie. Billy shot Marco the ball. Marco caught it on his head and bounced it up and down like a seal. Everyone started to laugh at him. Sam's face got hot. He grabbed the ball and made another basket. Chris caught the ball under the net. He threw it to Marco. This time, Marco caught the ball on his knee and bounced it up and down. Everyone again laughed at him. 
Sam felt awful. Let's go home, he told Marco. The next day, Sam and Marco went to school together. At recess, they played kickball. When the ball came to Marco, he stopped it with his feet. Don't you ever use your arms, asked Freddy. But Marco didn't understand. The next time the ball came to him, he stopped it with his feet again. Back home, Sam tried to explain the rules of sports to Marco. Hold the ball in your hands, said Sam. When you play basketball, bounce the ball as you run. It's called dribbling. But Marco just looked at Sam. He didn't understand English. He couldn't even say Sam's name right. He said, Sammy. The next day after school, Sam didn't want to go outside. He didn't want to play ball. He was afraid his friends would make fun of Marco. And his Sam's mother said, why don't you draw? So Sam got out his crayons. He drew a picture of a basketball player. Marco drew a picture of his mother and father. Sam's mother looked at the pictures. You know what I think she said? I think Marco is homesick. Let's take him to the mall to cheer him up. At the mall, Sam's mother bought Marco a giant shirt. But it didn't make Marco happy. He didn't know who the giants were. Let's try some video games, said Sam. Watch, I'll show you how to play. Sam played Pac-Man and got a very high score. Now you go, he said to Marco. Don't worry if you don't get a good score at first. Have any of you ever played Pac-Man? It's an older video game. Marco played Pac-Man and got a better score than Sam. He laughed. In Mexico is Pac-Man also, he said. Marco beat Sam at every game in the arcade. They walked further down the hall, the mall, looking at stores. When they came to the sports store, Sam stopped to look at footballs. But Marco wasn't interested in footballs. He ran over to a display of black and white balls in boxes. Suddenly he was grinning from ear to ear. Why didn't I think of this before? said Sam's mom. Most kids in Mexico play soccer. Soccer? Nobody plays that around here, said Sam. Well, maybe they will now, said his mother with a smile. Back home, Marco took his new ball outside. He bounced it on his head. He kicked it under his feet. Chris and Billy came over. Marco kicked the ball to Chris. Chris caught it with his hands. No hands, said Marco. He kicked the ball to Billy. Billy caught it with his hands too. No hands, yelled Marco. Head, head. He bounced the ball on his head. Then Marco kicked the ball to Sam. Sam let the ball fall on his head. Bueno, said, cried Marco. Bueno, Sammy. Sam laughed. He kicked the ball back to Marco, who kicked it to Billy. Billy bounced it back to Sam with his head. Bueno, Billy, said Marco. Then he kicked the ball to Chris. Chris caught it on his head and bounced it to Billy. Billy caught it on his head and bounced it to Sam. This is awesome, said Sam. 
Let's bring the ball to school tomorrow, said Chris. We'll show the other kids how to play, said Billy. Bueno, said Marco. Good. The next day at recess, Marco showed the other second graders how to play soccer. They stood in a circle and passed the ball around with their heads. Once, Sam caught the ball with his hands. What do you think Marco yelled? No hands, yelled Marco. No, we do it with our heads and our feet. The next time someone caught the ball with his hands, everyone yelled. Yell with me. No hands. It was fun. Then Marco told them to pass the ball with their feet. Once Chris picked up the ball with his hands. No hands, everyone shouted. The third graders came by and they laughed. No hands, ha 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 ha, they said, what a weird game. Some of the second graders felt stupid. They didn't like to be teased by third graders. Do you, none of us like to be teased, do we? Forget it, said Sam. I've got a plan. Let's practice all week. Then we'll challenge the third graders to a game. They beat us in football. They beat us in basketball. And they beat us in baseball. But they won't beat us in soccer, will they? The second graders liked the plan. They practiced all week. Sam practiced most of all. On Friday morning, Sam went up to the third graders in the playground. If you think you're so hot, he said, play soccer with us at lunch. Then we'll see who's really hot. The third graders took the challenge. Then everyone went back to class. It was hard to study. Billy said five plus four was eight. Five plus four is not eight. What is it? Nine. Chris dropped his notebook on the floor and all his papers fell out. Marco was so excited, he forgot the capital of the United States. He said it was Dallas, Texas, not too far from us. But we know it's not Dallas, Texas. What is the capital of the United States? Washington, D.C. Yeah. Sam was so excited. He could hardly write his spelling words. Finally, it was lunchtime. Everyone ate quickly and rushed outside. The second and third graders met on the field. Sam marked the goals with jackets. Billy went over the rules. Only the goalie can catch the ball, he said. To score, you have to kick the ball past the goalie and into the place marked by jackets. So they didn't have bona fide soccer goals because they hadn't played soccer. The game began. Marco passed the ball to Chris. Chris started to dribble the ball up the field. One of the third graders ran in front of him. Chris passed the ball to Sam. Sam kicked the ball hard but missed. The ball sat on the field. A third grader ran up and kicked it way down the field. What a kick! The third graders were really big and strong. Another third grader kicked the ball into the third grader's goal. The score was one to zero. The third graders were ahead. Sam looked worried. 
No problema, said Marco. He dribbled the ball to the opposite goal all by himself. Third graders tried to get the ball away from Marco, but he zigzagged around them. Two of the third graders fell down trying to catch Marco. Go, Marco, baby, yelled Billy. Marco kicked the ball at the second graders' goal. It went in. Now the score was a 1-1 tie. Hooray, shouted Sam. The third graders had the ball now. One of them kicked it halfway down the field. Another one dribbled it to the third grade goal. He took aim and fired. Tommy, who was goalie for the second graders, caught the ball. Hooray, shouted Sam again. He knew it was all right for Tommy to catch the ball. In soccer, goalies are the only players who can do that, who can use their hands. Freddie threw the ball to Sam. Sam passed it to Marco. Marco ran it down to the other end and passed it back to Sam. Sam gave it a good hard kick. The ball sailed over the goalie's head. Now the score was two to one. The third graders weren't used to losing. They began to make mistakes. They caught the ball with their hands. Every time they did, the second grader shouted, No hands! The second graders started scoring like crazy. Bam, Chris got a goal. Slam, he got another one. Wham, 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 Billy got one goal. And Rosie got two. But Sam and Marco were the team stars. They ran circles around the third graders. They scored six goals each. When lunchtime was over, the score was 19 to one. Whoa, what a score. I don't think I've ever seen a soccer score that high. Man, a wipeout, said Sam. The third graders were good losers. That's good. They all shook hands with the second graders. Then they asked Marco if he would teach them how to play better. See, si, said Marco, soccer Sammy teach you too. Everybody laughed. Soccer Sammy, they shouted. Soccer Sammy. And that's how Sam got his nickname. At first, he wasn't sure if he liked it or not. Miss Bueno, asked Marco, you like new name? Sam looked at his cousin. He knew that anything Marco gave him, he would like. See, si, said Sam, I like. Gracias. The end. I hope you've enjoyed the story of Soccer Sam, and I hope that you'll find books, more books that you'll want to read and enjoy. It's a great way to have a good time by yourself or with friends reading together. Thank you for letting me join you today. Have a wonderful time and keep reading.